Returning to the character that made him a TV icon, Adam West dons the cowl of Batman once again as he provides his well-known voice for the new animated feature, Batman Return of the Cape Crusaders, arriving on home video on November 1st. I had a chance to sit down with him at New York Comic Con to chat about working with new and old collaborators, the state of the TV industry, and his advice for other Batman. West on why his Batman resonates today. I'm so damn good. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I think because, uh, you know, we played it for the whole family spec. You know, so the kids would enjoy the excitement. And uh, the adults would laugh because it was a comedy. And, um, you know, when we delivered uh, those homilies and little ethical lessons, like good dental hygiene even, <laughs> it, you know, the, the adults thought, well, that's pretty good that our kids are listening to that. And, uh, the, you know, the kids took it serious. On getting back into character. You know, when you do something for maybe three years, and you play that every day and, and think about it and try to do little things, whatever you can do with the character, uh, and to make it funny and yet really sincere for the children. Um, you just pull on that cowl and you're right back there. Now, I didn't pull on the cowl because somebody stole it. But <laughs> all, all I had to do was go in and, you know, little sense of memory there and, and um, enthusiasm when it comes back. On the difference between playing Batman on screen and in animation. The difference might be that with the voice only and with the audience that they were really seeking mostly, that is the kids, it was more straight ahead and less nuance, less tongue-in-cheek, you know, that kind of thing that you could do on film with your, your movement or whatever you're thinking, even through the eye holes in the cow. <laughs> and, and, but when you're doing, you know, voiceover like this, um, it was just dead ahead and, you know, right on and serious kind of. Um, and then I had a few moments where I could, you know, throw in a little something here and there and be adults. On working with Burt Ward and Julie Newmar again. Yeah, it was easy. You know, when they're, when you know their action, you know what they're going to do with it. And you played the character for a long time. It, it came back instantly. All I had to do was listen for a moment in my head or whatever they were showing for the animation. Yeah. And this was uh, kind of neat, too, because you could work uh, from the animation, lip sync. And uh, many times, uh, you know, they'll photograph you in the role, like the mayor and family guy. And then they'll have that film to, you know, look at and base the animation on, which is a different thing. But this time out with Batman... You know, you just looked at the animation and lip synced it. You know, tried to do the rhythms. And it wasn't tough. Comparing the 1960s writers to the new writers. Oh, they were so good with that. My God. Lorenzo had won the New York Film Critics Award. Um, he, he was a remarkable writer. And I was privileged to have him writing, you know, for us. He and I became great friends. And, um, you know, today's writing, it doesn't differ so much because the writers with whom I work, at least with the Batman stuff, they've been very good. And, you know, for them to have, well, what they did, I think, you know, I'm a, I'm a senior superhero, <laughs> but they grew up with me. So they had a pretty good sense of what they wanted, you know, with, within the, the dimensions of their memories. And it worked. So I got a hand it to them, you know. Uh, maybe what I did was indelible. His thoughts on radio serials and today's television. 
You know, I still on on Sirius. You know, on the absolutely what do you call it, satellite radio. Yes, sir, like I listened to some of those old shows occasionally because they were so good, allowing you to use your imagination. And I learned always from that a little more. Yeah. And you know, when you think of Orson Welles and Joseph Cotton, the, the Mercury Theater, whatever it was, wow, that was so good. Yeah. Uh, I started in radio, yeah. in college, yeah, and then I was a disc jockey and a lot of stuff, a news guy, and, and uh, you know, I think many actors that I've talked to or learned about, they really did radio, except the younger ones, that mostly they don't, they didn't, you know, they don't have the same opportunities of, you know, getting a job and working your way through and up. Yeah. Too many people go to Hollywood and you know, are disenchanted. You know, the, the, they find it so tough. And it is. It's so terribly competitive now. Because look at all the windows we have. All the outlets for content. I don't know how people keep track of that. I'll watch TV and tune around until my wife says, stop it! But I'll tune around and and I'm amazed at all the different content and, and the way it's delivered. Nothing seems really special anymore. Just the Walking Dead? Huh? Maybe that's special. It scares the hell out of me. Uh, I don't know, but there, there, there just seem to be so many shows from which to choose. You know, you hardly know what to watch. To get a show picked up every season for how many years? Twelve years? Family guys. I've done it for twelve years <laughs> as the mayor. The loony mayor. Which is kind of fun. But some shows do hit a stride and they get picked up. So many don't. Such a waste of money and talent. On what he'd like to do next. I look all the time for material that might be challenging or find funny and uh, something that might work for an old codger uh, it just seems irredeemably awful West's advice for other Batman there, there are a lot of running around um, let the costume work for you on the screen and um, you know, you can be violent, you can be downtrodden, vengeful, whatever you're doing with the character. But don't take yourself too seriously. 